Good morning, everybody, although it's probably afternoon now. Um, so I'm going to tell you about a case um, that we had here in the Wells Veterinary Science Centre, um, a case of high mortality, which was caused by lapping ill virus and tick-borne fever. So this particular farm, um, in the April, he brought a group of 180 hogs and barren ewes, um, some of which were homebred, some had been purchased, and he brought them back to his home farm from Winter Tack. In the May, oh, before he moved them up to uh, Hill Pasture, he kept them housed for 10 days. He bolused them with a trace element bolus. He wormed them and he applied an acaricide pour on. Then he moved them to 12 hectares of unimproved Hill Pasture. And then on the 22nd of May, he first found eight dead animals um, and by the 30th of May, a total of 51 had died. And luckily for him, he brought uh, the first one to us here at the Wales Veterinary Science Centre on the 22nd of May. So we could start investigating, investigating the deaths um, quite promptly. So apart from finding some dead, he also found some struggling to breathe with lethargy and some were recumbent and, able, and unable to stand. And he treated these with antibiotics and anti-inflammatories. And you can see um, on the right hand side of your screen, this is one of the ewes that we had in and you can see the head is all those black dots are ticks and she was covered. So we undertook a post-mortem examination of a total of three animals from this holding. And the post-mortem examinations aren't that, there isn't a lot going on, but we did find enlarged lymph nodes, um, enlarged spleen, and in the image there you can see a large spleen, and we found large numbers of ticks. On one particular U, there were so many ticks that when you've got your arms on the U, they were crawling up our gloves and we had to keep changing our gloves every five minutes or so because there were just so many ticks. So what did we do after the post-mortem examination? Well, we kept um, some samples of spleen frozen. Um, one of the animals was submitted alive. Um, so we took blood samples before um, euthanizing her. And where we could, we also took brain. And we were very careful, particularly when we were taking brain, um, to bear in mind the zoonotic implications of uh, Lalpingil. So these were the tests that we um, undertook on the samples. So we sent off samples for PCR for tick-borne fever to Morden. Um, we also sent Lalpingil virus samples up to Morden for the Lalpingil PCR and uh, the heparin blood also went up to Morden. And then the brains initially went to Finn pathologists and they also went on to APHA Weybridge for further testing. Um, and we also sent a large number of ticks to Liverpool University and to APHA Weybridge for further testing as well. So these were the results. So you can see that conclusive positive for, for both diseases here. And the interesting thing about when you submit blood for testing is that you can get some information on um, which antibodies they find more prevalent and therefore possibly how recent the infection is. So this is a pretty pink picture, um, but basically it shows the typical histology that we'd find with Lalping ill virus. So this is looking right down under the microscope. And this is a picture of immunohistochemistry where the antigen is highlighted by the brown um, colour there so that you can see that this is positive for Lalping ill virus. So what did the farmer do? So after the first deaths um, and the first submission here to us, he removed that group of um, hogs and ewes from the hill as soon as he got home. And what happened next? Well, he continued to lose them. He, he lost 51 in total, but then didn't lose any more um, later in the year. So 
looking at the outcome and the follow-up and what he's been doing since, and I have spoken to this farmer this year, um, he didn't have any further deaths um, after May last year. He um, explained to me that some of those 12 hectares where the sheep were grazing is common land and he did speak to his neighbours and none of his neighbours lost any animals at all. But we had a discussion about whether his neighbours were putting immune animals up on the hill and maybe a large proportion of his ewes, were, the homebred ones, were already immune and therefore they're the ones that survived. Um, there was discussion about per receiving permission to spray the bracken um, this year, but the grants, um, I'm told, didn't go far enough, so it wasn't done. So we submitted ticks and the farmer went back and did more dipping and submitted a large number of ticks, both up to Liverpool University and APHA Weybridge. And um, some of the ticks have also gone up to Morden for more investigation. And there, there is some testing that you can do on the ticks to um, diagnose these diseases as well. And this year, the hogs were brought back from rented keep, treated with a different pour on, and he had no deaths at all this year, which is a bit of good news. Um, and I'd just like to thank um, Roger Daniel for his help with this case report, all the staff here, and um, Mara from Morden, Mark at Finn, Toby in APHA Weybridge, Amanda Carson, and also the farmer, because um, he kept in good contact with me and we kept up to date with the cases as well. Thank you very much.